Welcome to Front Runner Motorsport. Hello and welcome to Front Runner Motorsport. So still not a lot happening in the world of motorsport at the moment. There's the Toyota Racing Series and a dumb pre-season NASCAR race this weekend. But we are still a couple of weeks away from the launch of all the new F1 cars. And whilst I'm very excited to see what minimal changes Mercedes and Ferrari make to their cars, we still need to wait just a little longer. But I will be doing a livery review of the new cars after they are all released as well as a predictions video for the new Formula 1 series before it gets started again in just over a month's time. In the meantime, let's go back and take a look at the champions of the Formula 3 European Championship that ran between 2012 and 2018 before being merged with the GP3 series to form the current Formula 3 series we know and love. Remember to leave a comment, especially with ideas for videos you'd like to see, and subscribe and like the video too. With that said, let's begin our look back at the European Formula 3 Championship. 2012, Daniel Junkadella. The nephew of former Formula 1 drivers Alex Solaroig and Luis Perez Sala, who have a single point between them in Formula 1. Daniel won the Euro Formula 3 Championship ahead of future stars Carla Sainz and Pascal Wehrlein, but it never worked out for Daniel, not moving up in single seaters, and instead switching to DTM and various GT racing series. He hasn't been a success. After six years in DTM, he has a single win for Mercedes in 2018, before a disastrous year with our motorsports Aston Martin team that has now left him without a drive for 2020, because the team ran off with their tail between their legs, leaving their drivers without employment. Considering his one other win since 2012 was a Blanc Pain GT Series Endurance Cup race in 2017 for Aka Asp Mercedes, I'm not sure who will employ the poor man. Maybe Subway? 2013 Rafael Marcello. The man who finished up second in 2012 won it in 2013, beating Felix Rosenquist in a field that also contained the likes of Nicholas Latifi and Antonio Giovinazzi. Unlike Daniel Giancadella, Rafael Marcello stayed in single seaters and moved up to GP2. He'd take a single win and a smattering of podiums and even finished fourth in the overall standings in 2016. Along with a test for Sauber Formula 1 team in 2015, made it look like Marcello had a bright future in front of him. Unfortunately, he too would end up in the Blanc Pain GT wasteland, winning the World Challenge Europe in 2018 in a Mercedes with the Aka Asp team. I'm starting to notice a pattern with their hiring policy. 2014 Esteban Ocon Probably one of the best drivers to win the Formula 3 Euro Championship, beating a young Max Verstappen to the title. Given the pair's careers in Formula 1, where Max is an up-and-coming superstar and Esteban Ocon was sidelined for a year because Lance Stroll really needed that racing point seat that his dad coincidentally paid for, at least Ocon got to test for Mercedes for a year and now going into 2020 he has a race seat with Renault and hopefully we can see his speed and talent again. A year after winning the Formula 3 Euro Championship he would win the GP3 Championship with ART Grand Prix and after a half year in DTM he was brought into the MANA Formula 1 team replacing Rio Harianto. Remember him? He'd have two decent years with Force India before losing his seat Always a consistent point scorer for the team. Hopefully he can repeat that form with Renault in 2020. 2015, Felix Rosenquist. Well, it took him long enough. This was his fourth attempt at winning the Formula 3 European Championship. In fact, he had two more years in the Formula 3 Euro Series, which preceded this championship. So after six years, he dominated the field and beat a who's who list of names, including Antonio Giovinazzi, George Russell, Lance Stroll, Charles Leclerc, Alexander Albon and many more among them. After that Felix had a go at pretty much everything. He raced in Blanc Pain and a half year of DTM, finished third overall in Formula E with Mahindra, third overall in Super Formula and in his rookie season of IndyCar was a consistent performer and finished sixth overall despite not winning a race. He's also had a go at Super GT, the Daytona 24 hours and Le Mans 24 hours. He is a man of many talents and in 2020 looked to be having another go at IndyCar and hopefully will start winning races. 
2016 Lance Stroll. You know, I make fun of Lance Stroll a lot, but he has at least had success at lower formula, proving he can compete at a high level. He dominated the 2016 season with nearly 200 points more than Maximilian Gumpfer in second, and with his daddy's money, got a Formula 1 drive pretty quickly. The very next year, actually, and within eight races would have his first podium, third in Azerbaijan with the Williams. 2018 was a disappointment with Williams, though, starting to struggle to compete, and honestly, that should have been it for Lance Stroll. Luckily for him, his dad stepped in and brought the Force India team, renaming it to Racing Point and giving Lance Stroll a job for as long as he wants it. He occasionally shows a little, but largely seems to struggle in the midfield of the pack. Maybe 2020 will be better for the young Canadian. 2017 Lando Norris Pretty much the opposite of Lance Stroll, Lando Norris is going from strength to strength. Beating Joel Eriksson and Gunther, he'd move on to Formula 2 the very next year with Carlin, but lost out to fellow young Brit George Russell. But still got his Formula 1 debut in 2019 with McLaren. He was unlucky at times and was a step behind more experienced teammate Sainz, but gave a very good account of himself and going into 2020 is someone who has something to prove. And 2018 Mick Schumacher. The final Formula 3 European champion and definitely one for the future, the son of seven time Formula 1 champion Michael Schumacher has a very large shadow to step out of and so far this is the only series he has ever won. Beating Dan Tictum to the title, he moved straight up to Formula 2 with Prima Motorsport. He won a race, looked very quick at times, but lacked consistency and looked a little out of his depth. He will get another chance in 2020 with the same team, and honestly, if he shows an ounce of talent, then surely Ferrari will come calling. Even if it only gets a drive of Alfa Romeo or Haas, I'd put money on Mick Schumacher being in Formula 1 someday soon. Probably followed by cousin David Schumacher, who is racing in Formula 3 in 2020. So that is the list. A lot of these guys ended up in Formula 1, and even the ones who didn't largely landed on their feet. Thank you for watching. Any ideas for videos you want to see, let me know, and remember to hit that subscribe button. Thank you to everyone who has subscribed. It's nice to be making progress, even if it is slow progress. I really appreciate it. And with that, I'll leave you, so have a good one.